munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie bringing you another video about hamster care and or just care in general of our small beloved companion animals, also known as pocket pets. So today I have a video that I've been planning on making, just didn't get around to it because I found out that we are moving. And yes, we are coming to the last few weeks, so I'm sorry if all this is just thrown at you at once, I hope you don't mind, but let's get right into it about the news of Oxbow's new hamster cage. Yeah. So I actually discovered this back in May and I freaked out on Twitter. I was like, no, because I was informed by a munchkin and also I believe Victoria Rachel on Instagram, she let me know that Oxbow actually just came out with a cage that was geared towards hamsters that was not appropriate. Oh my good gracious, Oxbow. Ever since I made the Oxbow health video about the hamster and gerbil diet and that being mostly hay based, which unfortunately hamsters can't get the nutrients in them before it gets passed through and then out the other end. So I talked about that video about Oxbow, but I wasn't planning on going after Oxbow. That was not really my intentions. I just wanted to make it clear to my audience that I don't support something because it is not deemed to be the best quality and suitable. And unfortunately, their other lines are great. But for hamsters, they're just suffering and I hate that. So hearing that there's a new cage out there, I had to investigate. But unfortunately, Oxbow has pulled it from their website. Well, actually that's a good thing if they pulled it from their website, but I wanted to share with you what it said. I do have some Amazon screenshots I would like to share with you and I do have the video. So let's go check out what terrible cage Oxbow came up with this time. And I'm saying this time just because Oxbow in the past, back in 2015, is the last known recorded history of Oxbow cages being sold at PetSmart. And if you remember, they were the really dark gray cages cages that kind of look like a prison, <laughs> a small little fortified prison. I mean, the wheel looked big enough, but there was absolutely no enrichment. It was just like an observation cage. It's just, we are here to treat our hamsters. We are not here to observe them in the smallest confinement ever. I mean, I still feel really bad that the cage you see behind me is the Preview 528 cage. It's 600, around 605, 608 square inches. If you measure the sides here, but I feel bad because we domesticated hamsters and hamsters were domesticated back in the late 30s, early 40s, but unfortunately they have quite a huge territory in the wild that they go and explore in. And like I said, average of five to 10 miles is what the hamster on average in the wild does. Domestically, five miles a night on their wheel and running about their enclosure. But it's just sad that we do have to house them in things like this. So that's why outside of the cage, hamster interaction is need it. It is definitely a requirement. You should not be keeping hamsters, especially Syrians, only in here all the time. So when seeing hamster behaviors, we always look for making sure they're not stressed. And if we interact with them more and if we let them out more, they become relaxed hamsters. If you have a little stress ball and you're not taking them out, that's not good. So that's why I here and other hamster channels on YouTube are here to explain to you guys how you can probably have a bond between hamster and hamster owner that you can understand and cherish. So let's go check out, after all that introduction, the actual cage. All right, so I'm at my computer table here and I am going to go over the screenshot from Amazon that I have for you guys about the habitat. It is called Oxbow Enriched Life Hamster Habitat. Habitat for the hamsters. And it doesn't say anywhere gerbils or mice. So this is great. It is literally geared towards hamsters. They don't expect gerbils or mice to be in here. So it's priced at 70 79 which is right under the price of the Preview 528, which is the suitable enclosure. It says here, Perimeter Track promotes natural exploring. See through base to watch them play and explore. Now this is something I really do like. Easy to take apart for cleaning. Because I haven't physically done that, I cannot put a comment there. And bridge and wheel encourage plan and exploration. They encourage plan and exploration. 
encourage plan. Crystal clear water bottle and hanging food bowl included. So there wasn't actually dimensions on Amazon for this cage. Well, it's relatively new and I can understand them just wanting to get it out there. But the thing that makes me question this is that Oxbow apparently pulled the cages from their website and pulled the video down that I'm about to share with you guys today. So it's unlisted, woo. But they kept this Amazon shop of theirs with their hamster cage up. So you still, right now, as I'm talking, can purchase this cage, but I feel like it is just maybe one or two left, I think, and, but I believe there's just like one or two of these cages left, so that's great that it wasn't mass produced, hopefully, hopefully. Let's watch the unlisted video just to get our reaction of it, to see what they feature, just because we don't have the website anymore, so that is why I'm showing you their video. So let's just get right into this, shall we? All right, very catchy intro. Nightmare. Syrian hamster. All right, at least we got the big one. Perimeter track promotes natural exploring behavior. Yep, just like they demonstrated. I do like the holes in it, but it's definitely not good. The pan looks really shallow. The bridge though, why? Look at that, that is so small. And look, the hamster keep sliding off of it. It has not that great traction then. And of course, too small. Of course, we got the traditional hanging water bottle. Hanging food bowl, I do like that. Oh yeah, that's right, it's Oxbow food. I'm like, oh no, that poor hamster. <laughs> Sorry, Oxbow. Your food for the animals is not that great. It's a hot topic right now for Oxbow. So that is why we're talking about it, but that is the video there. And I just was so disgusted with it that I left a bad ranty review on it. But because I did tag, well, I didn't tag them on Twitter, but I mentioned them on Twitter and I said in my initial review, are you bleeping kidding me with this? Oxbow, what the heck did you do? Leaves angry rant, which means I left an angry rant on the video. And guess what? They actually responded. This was May 22nd and they responded on May 23rd. We appreciate your feedback regarding our new hamster habitats. We want what's best for pets and would love to hear more from the hamster community about how to best meet the habitat needs of these amazing animals. Please share your feedback. And that is what I'm gonna be doing today with you you guys we are gonna go over the survey together we get to see exactly what the survey is I've already taken it but I'm allowed to take it again apparently but I need to go over the survey with you in hopes that you guys can help in the video description down below there will be a link you can take it you and I want you to take it please because we need to provide the correct feedback if Oxbo is gonna be along the lines of KT where they actually listen to us and make a cage with our recommendations our size recommendations and us just wanting a bigger cage. Heck, if they meet the cage requirements, and I absolutely love it, I wouldn't mind using a cage, but all these cages are kind of like mimicking after each other, and at least they're not like the Tiny Tails line where they're mimicking KT. Those cages are so outdated. They do look like the fur class cages, however, in this video. We are gonna take the survey, give them our feedback because they're actually listening, and I'm thanking you guys so much because you right here are possibly creating history with me, with Oxbow, in a better direction. All right, so the first thing says, how many hamsters do you currently own? One of them says, I don't currently own any hamsters. Don't click on that. If you currently right now do not own a hamster, but you have in the past, like I wanna say six months, that's a good time. If you've owned a hamster in the past six months and could actually provide correct feedback, just hit one. Because if once you hit, I don't currently own any hamsters, it closes out the survey for you. So don't do it. I've been warned by my viewers, so I'm gonna take it again, but this is just correct feedback. We own three plus hamsters. Personally, I own four, but one of them's a foster fail because they have to be in our care because of medical attention. Uh, so click next. Do you house multiple hamsters together in the same habitat? This should be an automatic, no. But of course there are still the dwarf hamsters that can't coexist, they just need a really huge enclosure. But a lot of the times because hamsters are beginner pets, people don't know this, so they think it's acceptable. I am going to tell people now it is not acceptable to be doing that, so please don't. Just as a safety precaution, I've seen too many ripped up Roborowski backs and too many bite wounds on dwarf hamsters and their ears, because they go for the ears and or face, that I do not recommend 
recommend it. So no, I do not. And same with Syrians. I see so many Syrians housed together and we just rescued one Syrian, her name is Zena, and she actually has huge bite wounds that thankfully have healed with the help of medication. Echo, why? Echo is now on her water bottle. Thanks Echo. By the way, all these hammies in this room are my foster animals. For those of you who are tuning in now and don't know I'm a rescue, I'm a foster and rescue, hi! I am the crazy hamster lady. They were fighting for 10 months, huge adult Syrian hamsters. She weighs 256 grams, 256 grams. Biggest hamster I have ever seen. She tops the record of Hershey, which was our ex foster hamster at 236 grams. So overweight, has wounds, healing up now. We got her. And that was from a terrible situation where the family thought it was funny to see them suffer. How many of each of the following breeds do you currently own? Um, more than five. Uh, Robos, one. Chinese, zero. And there's no option for zero, so leave it blank. Campbell's, zero, because we just thankfully rehomed Spitfire, the aggressive hamster. Oh, she's been with us for seven months, and so I'm so happy she got adopted. Winter White. <sighs> Reinhardt did pass away. I have yet to make a video, a tribute video for him, um, but no, I don't have one anymore. And other, I did. <laughs> other, gerbos and mice, we heard their cages. <laughs> but other, please specify, which, you know, probably people would say gerbils and mice. What type of habitat make model do you currently have for your hamsters? I am just going to list 40 gallon breeder tanks, preview by 28, DIY bin cages, and then I do have the Lixit hamster haven, um, but I don't really like that cage at all. I don't want to include that just because I don't want them to be like, huh, that's a cage we should look at to see if it, <laughs> if we can mimic it. I, I don't want them mimicking that. Uh, what are the dimensions? Uh, 450 plus square and just cause you know, all the habitats had different dimensions. I'm just gonna list a uh, overall area, which 455 square inches for my dwarfs and 600 plus square inches for my Styrian hamsters. In your opinion, what is the ideal number of level stories for a hamster habitat? Honestly, I don't want them. I take all the levels out. I don't like levels in hamster habitats. I want them to be long, but I want their pants to be very deep. I think people want levels, but you're kind of sacrificing the depth of the bedding. So no levels, I'm just gonna say level one. Other, please specify. Um, there's no other option. It just says one, two, three, four, other. <laughs> I don't like using levels. They are not needed. Is there anything you would change about your current habitat to improve the quality of life for your hamsters? Make it bigger, but it's hard trying to find appropriate size. Oh, wow, I spelled that wrong. <laughs> appropriate size enclosures in the US. The UK has some, but not for us. I was gonna add a sad face, I'm like, add a sad face. What is ideal size habitat for Syrian? Honestly, seven, eight, I like even 800 plus square inches. Like, yes, okay, we're just gonna say, who is chewing on what? Ooh, no, don't be chewing on your water bottle. I have Star, and Star, if she doesn't get out, she gets fitty. She becomes a brat. Star is our little brat. Anyways, Syrians, they should have 800 plus square inches. And then what the ideal habitat for a dwarf breed of hamster. A lot of my Campbell's Russian dwarfs definitely did require a big space because they were aggressive. I've never actually had a regular Campbell's Russian dwarf that wasn't aggressive in my care. It's, it's pretty insane how I get them. But my winter whites, they all really didn't need that much space. They needed lots of bedding, but they definitely didn't like going on the surface and running around. They stayed within their burrow area. So for them, I usually place them in something 450 square inches, and if they need more, I can get them more. Or if they need out, I can get them out. But for dwarfs in general, 450 has been great. Roboroski, however, my little boy, he does like coming out, but he's so scared and skittish that it doesn't really benefit him. Why? Star is always in heat and so musky, but this is her. She has grown up since I think, yes, we got her in November, November 22nd, if I remember correctly, but she is filled out. Look at her, guys. You probably want a little treat now, huh? You're getting some shout out time and then all the hamsters in the room are getting jelly. Hi, little girl. Hi. 
But yeah, she actually uh, came to us as a short coat, but if you're noticing, she has kind of a longer, kind of wavier, especially in the back here. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little bit wavier and longer, but that's just naturally what happens when they get older and, oh, she leaked on me. Oh, she's in heat. Oh, I need to put her back. Oh my goodness. You guys probably know so much about hamsters in the heat by now that you're just like, eh, I can handle it, but oh my gosh, sometimes I cannot. Anyway, so I'm gonna say 400 to 500, but definitely more is a lot better. Just this is what I typically use for my fosters and or my own personal hamsters. Does your hamster's habitat currently feature a wheel? Feature a wheel, usually when it says feature a wheel, it means include a wheel, have a wheel. So I'm not entirely sure about this. It has one of those stars next to number 10, which makes me question why. Um, but is it feature as in included? Which I feel like it is. If they are trying to make a better enclosure, they are going to ask this question to see, hey, do we need to add a wheel to our enclosure for you to buy it? No, I don't think so, so I'm gonna say no. I think that's what this question is trying to get at. Uh, next one, what is the ideal diameter of the wheel for a Syrian hamster? Ooh, I'm glad that they're asking these. Well, actually, I already know that they're asking these, but I'm like you guys know, I'm glad they're asking these. My saving hamsters, they do best in nine to 12, up to 12. More would be kind of interesting, but you don't really see big ones unless they're for chinchillas. Um, but for Syrian hamsters, nine to 12 inches. Nine being very small, um, and usually males. There has been some bigger males, but there has also been some very small females. Sahara, my personal, is a small female, so she doesn't need anything bigger. But right now she is on a 10 inch wheel, but a lot of these guys are on nine inch wheels, especially for the young juvies. Uh, what's the ideal diameter for a dwarf breed of hamster? So I've seen dwarves do comfortably and fine on 6.5. However, I have noticed that once they get to be adult sizes, they do best on an eight inch wheel so I mean honestly yes a 6.5 inch is a really good base starter but bigger is always better and of course I'm gonna just do what I did for the Syrians which is just say 6.5 to you know I'm gonna say 10 inch no should I say 8 because I've never actually put a dwarf hamster on anything bigger except for I did try to get my poor Hannibal my robo on an 11 inch wheel but because the wheel has restriction like it doesn't run smoothly it has like a force that when you try to push it, it's kind of hard so you have to have a big force and able to be able to run on it but it's not smooth and that's what the hamsters like I like smooth wheels and unfortunately the wooden wheel I would never recommend to anybody anymore especially since I've been having issues with it it's a good size but cleaning it's a pain in the arse as well as just having that friction. I don't like it. Hamsters take forever to try to run on it. I see some of my Syrians go way up to the top before it even moves back down to the bottom and it's on all the wheels. It's just construction. So I'm just gonna say 6.5 to eight because I've never had to go higher. Uh, what types of enrichment do you currently offer your hamsters? Elevated platform, nope. Tunnel system, built in, nope. Tunnel system, independent, yes. Choose, of course you need, you absolutely need shoes. I don't know why that's an option in this. You need the truth. Uh, hideouts, yes. Climbing structures, yes. Other, um, I don't think I have another. Sand, bath, pit. There we go. Big bold letters. Which, if any, of the following accessories were included with the purchase of your current habitat? Elevated platform, I will say. Are there additional types of enrichment items you would like to offer your hamsters that aren't currently available on the market? More bedding type like dirt and sand, but of course you can get that from the reptile section. You can actually use natural reptile sand as sand bass and or go to Ace Hardware for play sand. How often do you purchase new enrichment items for your hamsters? Weekly. <laughs> Yes, that's, that's me. How likely would you be to purchase a different habitat for your hamsters in the next six months? Well, if you come out with a really good habitat in the next six months, I'll purchase it. So I'll say somewhat likely. <laughs> uh, you know me, always purchasing stuff. Well, I mean, to try out, but obviously there's not really a lot on the market for me to own, but yes, I, I buy a lot of review cages. In your opinion, what is the most important features that determine the quality of the hamster habitat? Please rank with one representing the most important feature. Um, space. 
should be number one. There we go. Uh, color design is absolutely last. Quality of materials definitely should be number two. You don't want them escaping. Accessories included water bottle, food wheel. Sure, we'll put that in number three. Innovative features for color design last because I don't care about color and design that much. Are there any other important features to determine the quality of the hamster habitat? Now I think that's good. How much would you be willing to spend on a hamster habitat that meets all of your needs? So right now I am basing everything off of the preview 528 uh, just because that is kind of where it is at because bigger cages out there have been very pricey and then smaller cages have been around the preview price or lower just barely lower but I want to say for a good decent hamster cage buy $50 to $100 seems good 100 to 100 like I wish it wasn't such a big range but I would say anywhere from like 70 to 100 I'm willing to pay for it because I love my fur babies so I'm just gonna say 50 to 100 but then again that doesn't give them much room so I'm really hoping that they can see this and just average it out and go okay maybe we'll do like $80 maybe I mean the KT super habitat critter trail is based off of 126 which they recently brought it down to 119 uh, last time I checked but that is so overpriced and you're not getting that much and the preview is already on the market and it's a bigger enclosure so oh yeah and the Lixit that I currently have been talking about this whole video that thing is expensive and it's only around the 500 range it's it's so small compared to the preview go with the preview so much easier or a DIY bin cage number 21 can we contact you if so please enter your email I've already entered my email so I'm not gonna do it again next and would you like to receive marketing messages uh, please enter your email I'm already done so we completed the survey thank you guys for taking the survey alongside me and seeing what I put down so you are aware of exactly what to do in your survey so if you like the video I have some news for you. I actually went out and bought the damn thing. We're gonna be reviewing it for you. So stick around the channel if you wanna see my review of this cage coming up soon. It's possibly not gonna be the next video and or it could be the next video, but just look for it on the channel. And if you like the video, hit like to show support for what I'm doing, educating, rescuing, saving, and talking to you guys on a camera. And leave comments down below if you took the survey, letting me know your thoughts about this whole thing, because oh my goodness, this cage is gonna be fun to open up. <laughs> and subscribe if you're new here and would like to become a part of the Munchkin family. And please, if you could, spread this video around so many more people can take the survey, many more people are aware of what Oxbow is doing, and hopefully we can improve our companion animals' care for our small, beloved pets. So thanks guys for everything, and I love your faces, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!